hey friends and welcome back. Today I want to share with you a few of my favorite easy home organization hacks and how we use them in our space to keep our home always feeling calm, stress-free, and generally user-friendly. I'm really big on making my home feel like it's working for me, not against me, and these strategies help me to accomplish just that. And there's seven hacks that I want to share with you today, as well as just to show you how we practically use them in our home. I'm really excited to get into this, so if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Let's get started. All right, and let's begin with an important one, and that is to contain it. If there are a few areas of your home that always seem messy or that are bursting at the seams, containing them can be a great way to help reduce visual clutter, really add definition to the space, as well as provide built-in accountability. Because whenever that basket or that shelf fills up, you just know it's time to declutter. This one's pretty straightforward, but I find it to be helpful on so many levels. And a few ways that we practically use this strategy in our home are first with winter gear. We use these little cloth bins to house all of our things like hats, gloves, anything that we'll need for the colder weather. We'll just store these in our closet in the winter. That way they're right by the door, easy to grab and go on the chillier days that we experience here in North Carolina. So that's one that's really been a game changer for us. Before we always used to have gloves and hats and things like that just scattered all throughout our closet. But then also too, I love using different bags and pouches to store things like my makeup and art supplies. I keep all of my watercolor paints in a little zippered bag. Those are just a couple of examples of ways that I've been able to use containers to my benefit, but I'd really encourage you just to get creative and to think through how you might be able to fix or to solve some of the constantly messy areas in your home by strategically using bins, boxes, and pouches to really organize those areas. Okay, but now moving on, our second tip is to hide and organize cords. Let's just face it, electronics and with them cords are just a part of our life. But often Often, they're one of the more disorganized parts. And so I really am a big champion of trying to hide cords wherever possible. It helps to reduce visual clutter, which as a result makes our homes look and feel more tidy and organized. Of course, that's one thing to talk about and another thing entirely to do. So here are a few of the strategies that I like to use. Number one is just to strategically place cords out of view. This lamp behind me is actually a perfect example of that. It's plugged in to the wall behind the blanket basket. And I actually specifically positioned the basket there so that you wouldn't see any cord from it. That way we get the beautiful aesthetic and light that the lamp provides without any of the visual clutter. Then on the organization side of things, if you have a lot of cords that you're trying to store, or maybe if you're just trying to put it away temporarily, something that I like to do just to ensure that your cords don't become a tangled mess is to wrap them up in a circle like this, then just use a binder clip like this to keep it all together. And this really takes just seconds to do, but it helps keep cords tidy. And actually, while I have this cord out, one other tip that I'll quickly mention is just to try to pick cord colors that match your walls. At some point, there are cords that are just going to be visible, whether it's in your kitchen or you're charging your phone, but by picking something that matches your wall color, it's going to be just a little bit less visible, create less visual clutter. And then finally, another great option for more permanent cords is to use cord hiders. We have one of these for our TV behind me. If you look, you'll notice that there's no cord between the TV and our media console down here. And that's because we've actually run the cord behind the wall rather than in front. And it's actually pretty easy to do. I think it took us less than 15 minutes, but it's made a huge difference in helping make our media area feel organized. So hopefully a few of those ideas can help you feel like cords aren't completely overtaking your life. And I'd love to know also if you have any other ideas on how to strategically hide cords. I'm not a big fan of them, even though I recognize their necessity, so I'm always down to hear some ideas. All right, but now moving on, we have tip number three, which is to organize by color. And I just want to preface this one by saying, I know this tip isn't for everyone, but especially if, like me, you're more of a visual person, organizing by color can be an incredibly effective strategy. And the reason for this is that our brains just instinctively remember color better than most things. And so it really is one of those organization systems that's easier for us to maintain. And of course, I wouldn't recommend organizing by color for everything, but for things like books or art supplies, it really can be a great tool. 
We've actually had our bookshelf organized by color for a few years now and really have fallen in love with the system. In the past, I'd always organized my books by category or by author, but I've actually found that by organizing by color, my bookshelf stays a lot more organized because it doesn't take mental effort for me to think through, okay, when I'm putting a book back, who was the author? What is the genre of this book? I'm just able to instinctively see the colors in front of me and put the book back in the exact proper place. And I've read close to, I think, a hundred books since we first set this system up and not once have I had to go and reorganize the bookshelf. It's just one of those things that's become really effortless and easy for me to maintain. Because there's something in your brain that when everything is organized by color, just wants to keep it that way. So again, this one isn't for everyone or everything, but for specific categories, it really can be powerful. Okay, we're back in the kitchen for tip number four, and that's just to make it visible. If there's one thing that I've learned over the years about my kitchen and pantry, but really my entire home, it's that if I can't see it, I'm going to forget about it and I'm not going to use it. So what we want to do when we're organizing is just to try to store things in such a way that we can see them. Whether that's pantry staples, dishes, utensils, things in our fridge, we want to make sure that we can actually see and access the things that we use on a daily basis. Maybe as I've been mentioning this, you've been thinking about a few spaces in your home where you just really can't see everything and things just end up going unused, I want you to think about those right now and to consider how you might be able to use vertical or horizontal storage solutions just to be able to maximize how much you can see. So vertically in the kitchen, you can use things like tiered shelves to be able to see all of your pots and pans, spices, or in my case, tea. And then in closets too, I also love using hanging shelves to again, just maximize that vertical space. We've been using a set of these in our closet for years now to be able to store things that shouldn't necessarily be hung up like sweaters. And that way we're able to see them all and easily access them without damaging them by hanging them up. So using the vertical space available to you is one way to maximize the visibility of your possessions then also think about how you might be able to use the horizontal space as well. And one big way that I like to do this is to use a series of bins to organize items by kind within my drawers. So my utility drawer, for example, there are a number of different little bins that I use to be able to organize each type of item that I have in there. That way everything's really easy to see and to put back in its place. So my utility drawer doesn't turn back into your stereotypical drunk drawer. And that's just one way that you can use horizontal organization to your advantage. Other examples are using different organizers for your cutlery, your utensils, makeup, jewelry, and the list really goes on. I find that often our tendency is just to organize the space that we've been given without really considering how we can maximize the space available to us. So I love just thinking through how by using vertical or horizontal tools, I might be able to maximize how much is visible to me. And that way you can really just make the most of the space that you have. But then really building off that, number five is to use the available space. And this one is especially important if you live in a smaller space, but even if you don't, it still can be super practical. A lot of space can go to waste either in our furniture or in our storage spaces, simply because we aren't using those areas strategically. So if you find yourself looking for more storage space, first, I'd always suggest trying to declutter and see if there is anything that you might not need or that you're not using. But if you've already done that, try to select and use furniture that's going to help you maximize your storage potential. This can look like a lot of different things. Maybe you want to use bins under your bed to store your undergarments. Add additional shelves to a poorly designed closet. So this is actually something that we're going to be doing down the road and I'm so excited. I don't know who came up with that single wire shelf idea that's in so many American homes, but it's just not practical. But then in our house right now, one of my favorite ways that we use this is to store all of our board games in the couch behind me. This entire section lifts up and it's a perfect way to be able to store the many board games that Christopher and I play on a regular basis. But of course, if you already have a couch that you love, one smaller and maybe a bit more approachable way that you could do this is just to use an ottoman with storage built into it to store whether it's games, blankets, or anything like that. Just some of those essentials that we often find ourselves using in the living room. I feel like we're really lucky these days there are so many inventive storage solutions out there. So if you find yourself looking for more storage space, see if one of those might be a perfect option for you. We have two left here. Number six is to decant and to label as needed. 
I think it's important to clarify here, not everything needs to be decanted and labeled. Honestly, sometimes it's more work than it actually is a help. But in certain situations, I find them to be extremely helpful, especially for things like keeping smaller items organized that might have lots of different shapes and sizes of packaging. And two of those categories in my home are spices and tea. The different shapes and sizes of all of their containers used to drive me crazy but no longer. By using uniform labels and containers, I've been able to transform both of these categories from some of the most disorganized and honestly just visually cluttered areas of my pantry and cabinets to some of the most satisfying. They're so beautiful now, it makes me want to use them more. So again, this isn't to say that you need to decant everything. I personally don't. I find with certain things, it is more of a hassle than a help. But for small, kind of lower turnover items, I really do find it to be beneficial. If you are wanting to do something like this, one suggestion that I would say just to keep in mind is to think through whether you want more permanent or temporary labels. For my spices over my years of cooking, I've really been able to learn what spices I use regularly and which I don't. And so I opted for more permanent labels because the spices that I like to keep in stock really don't change much from month to month for me. For my tea though, I do go through it quite regularly and often like to switch out the different types of tea that I have based on the season. So what I've decided to do here instead is to just use a simple Dymo label maker. You can buy them at Target, Walmart, Amazon. They're like $10. I use it to create labels that I can easily swap out as needed. Of course, either type of label can be a great option, but it's just something that you want to think through. All right, but then last but not least, our final tip is to create a home. Try to give everything that you own a home so that you have a designated base point to return your possessions to. I feel like typically we'll have a home for most of our items, but often there are a handful of floaters that just kind of move from spot to spot to spot in our homes without actually having anywhere where they belong. So for those items in particular, if there isn't a natural space for them, create one. When we first moved here, I didn't have a spot for my keys, so I just got a simple basket that we could drop them into. So a little basket like this or key rack can be a great solution for some on-the-go items. But then other places in my home where I've done this too, we're getting a bin to store my cleaning supplies so they didn't completely take over the cabinet I had them stored in. I also have a bin in this console table for items that people have forgotten at my home or that I'm wanting to give to a friend. There really are so many ways that you can create a space and a home for your items, but Really, it's as simple as just, if there are certain things that you feel like are always out of place or just constantly messy, it might be as simple as just, you haven't designated a home for those items, or perhaps you need to find a better one. And that's important, sometimes our items will have a home, but the original home that we picked out isn't necessarily the best one. So just think through, are you storing those items in a place that actually makes practical sense for you? You aren't locked into place when it comes to where you store things, so just know that there is flexibility to move things around as needed. All right, well, I hope that these tips are helpful and that they give you some great motivation and inspiration as you organize your own home. But now I would love to know, which of these tips did you find the most useful? Or is there one that you love and use all the time that I didn't mention here? I would love to hear about it, so be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, friends, I am wishing you all an amazing day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.